Hey guys, it's Devin here with Lifetime Preparedness. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about the growing potential for a global food shortage, which is on the horizon, potentially. Um, I seen Tyson came out today. Um, it's just one of the companies that have come out recently and uh, spoke on the uh, food chain breaking in this country. Um, and that was... Um, a quote of theirs um, that they said in this article, and it was on multiple sites. Um, I've seen it on CNN, I've seen it on Fox, uh, I've seen it on uh, RT, um, it was on a couple different uh, news outlets, and uh, it's uh, definitely a concern that we should all be paying attention to. Um, you have Smithfield coming out and saying it, Tyson, and I know there were some other companies as well, um, and this is just uh, meat we're talking here, but um, and I see the farmers, uh, they don't have anywhere to sell their their livestock to, so they're, a lot of them are being euthanized, um, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, with that being said, uh, though I know the one plant, I believe it was a Smithfield plant, I might be wrong, um, they employ, are they, um, supply 4.4 million people a day just the one plant with meat with food uh that that's a lot of food for um you know just one plant and if you take that into consideration with all of the other plants that are closing within the Smithfield company within the Tyson company within the rest of the companies um on top of that you know you got to think about the all the farms that aren't getting those uh loans to keep their farm going um this year because of the uh virus a lot of banks aren't giving those loans a lot of the big banks that give these you know larger farms um you know that aren't owned by the huge corporations the loans to get their farm because a lot of farms, a lot of farming in general, uh, w whether it be uh, produce, livestock, you know, whatever it is, they're, they're a lot of them are, you know, their crop comes off credit and they got to pay that back at the end of every year and hope to make some money off of it. Um, a lot of them, you know, I, I believe it's a good percentage. And, you know, considering that, you know, on top of all the crops that were, think about all the crops that were destroyed last year because of the, um, you know, the storms and the flooding, um, that's not going to just stop because there's a pandemic. That stuff's going to keep happening, if not get worse, you know, depending on who you talk to, depending on how you feel about the grand solar minimum. Um, and, you know, think about all those people that are, you know, fed with all of those farms so if farms aren't getting, all of them aren't getting the funding. So that means some farms are going to close because they're not getting that money up front from the bank to be able to, you know, produce that food. And then all of these, you know, the think about the few farms that are going to be, you know, their crops going to be destroyed from storms. And then you got to think about the, all the ones that are closing right now due to this pandemic, um, that's going to ruin um, the global food supply chain. I mean, and it's not just, just in this country, it's happening in other countries. But, um, if we stay focused on this country, that's going to cause a severe shortage of food because yet even just take the, that 4.4 million that is supplied a day with food from one single factory, where are they going to go? They're not getting food from there because they're closed. So that means they're going to go and get food from somewhere else where someone else other people get food from, so that's going to create a shortage from there, and, you know, people who, are, once meat prices, you know, start going up from the shortage of meat, which I noticed they've already started going up a little bit, um, once there's some severe shortages, um, people are going to be turning to other options, uh, you know, to every other company getting different types of food, you know, whatever it is, rice, uh, pasta, um, you know, um, cereals, what, whatever it is, people are going to be turning to that, um, different companies to those different companies and they're going to be needing to eat. So they're going to be getting the food from different places, which is, you know, going to add to all the people that normally buy those products. That is a little scary to me.
It's a little scary. Um, because that means uh, food food's gonna be in a higher demand with the same supply on some things and a lower supply on others. And there's going to be more of a demand. And then on top of that, you are going to have people who are not prepared going out there and panic buying food in bulk where it's still allowed, um, unfortunately. Um, so I, I really recommend that you guys go out and try getting some uh, food here and there. I mean, say you can only buy 10 cans from a grocery store. Say your grocery store, your local grocery store, limits you to 10 cans of food a day or 10 cans of vegetables, you know, two cans of pasta sauce, something along those lines. Um, I implore you to go as much as you can and as safely as you can with what's going on and get what you can and stock up now um, because there is going to be a global food shortage uh, potentially coming soon, uh, whether it's now or it's in a year or it's, you know, five years down the line. It it's it's coming, especially with the increased population around the world um, growing every year. If it's not, you know, now it's going to be in the future um, just for your families, for your friends, uh, for the people in your group. I recommend you really go out and buy a 25 or 50 pound bag of rice. Buy it. I mean, if you can only get a two pound bag of rice. You know, go get that two pound bag of rice. If you can only go to the grocery store and or to your Dollar General and pick up, you know, a can of Chef Boyardee ravi beef raviolis, uh, you know, you can only pick up you can pick up four cans of that for four dollars. Go do that. Go do that. And I, I, for example, I know they have sales there where you get five for four dollars sometimes on those. They're not, you know, the greatest food in the world. They they, they certainly don't taste bad. Um, depending on what you like, I don't think they're horrible, I don't eat them all the time, but they're definitely in my rotation, um, you really should have a, a, a good-sized pantry with, uh, food that's, you know, ready to eat for the most part, or just has to be heated up, uh, you can eat either or, um, that's why I get a lot of, um, you know, SpaghettiOs and meatballs, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, Chef Boyardee products, because they're ready to eat. If you have to, you can open that can up and just eat it right out of the can without heating it up. And heating it up is only, you know, it's not that hard. Even if you don't have electricity, you start a fire and cook it over a fire in a pot. You know, it's not that complicated saying, you know, I got baked beans. You got all different kinds of cans, meats uh, that you can get, uh, soups, fruits, vegetables. Um, a lot you can go, go get the individual bags of Instant mashed potatoes. Let me pull a bag out of here. Sir, these, this is about a dollar. And they have bigger bags as well. But this is about a dollar. And, you know, it's a fair amount of food. And it's, you just add hot water. And in all reality, you really could just add, you know, slightly warmed water or, you know, room temperature water. And it will still do the same job. Um, might not be as good if it's, you know, colder. But, um, you can make these with just water and they will last far beyond their expiration date um and well sorry their best buy date i had a, a bag that expired in 2013 and i had just consumed that in 2019 and it tasted just the same actually very delicious but um you know, it's just all, you gotta really should go out and get food and try to di diversify that if you can. I mean, get some spaghetti and some meatballs, get some uh, raviolis, get some, you know, uh, corned beef hash soups, uh, whatever soups you like, different soups, different canned meats, different canned fruits and different vegetables. Get pasta, a box of pasta right now. I, I noticed that Walmart went up to a dollar, I want to say a dollar and 12 cents. For a pound of pasta. And it was at 82 cents a pound. That's a pretty decent increase. You know. Just from this virus. And that was the last time I looked. That was over a month. Like probably over a month ago. Um, get cans of pasta sauce. I noticed the uh, Hunt's pasta sauce here. They have meat. They have four cheese. It's normally 82 cents. It's up to a dollar. And that's just you know, recently, I haven't, I haven't been to the grocery store in a, at least a few weeks, but I noticed that was a dollar when I went there. I picked up a couple cans, um, but I already had some in rotation. And this is, should be stuff that, you know, you per periodically use or use all the time that you like to eat. I, for example, like, um, 
New England clam chowder soup. So I stock a good amount of that. Same with the SpaghettiOs and meatballs. I really like that. And it's quick. If I have a night where I have a lot to do and I don't have time to cook and I don't want to spend money, I will just come and I will eat a can of SpaghettiOs and meatballs. And it's really not that bad for you. Um, especially if you're not eating it every day. It's it's not that bad for you. Um, it's also, you know, important to have things, like, to flavor with, like I've talked about in previous videos. I have all kinds of, you know, different mustards, barbecue sauces, things like that. Um, another thing that you guys could get is a, um, you know, go, go up to your Sam's Club or your Walmart and get a 10-pound bag of pancake mix. Run you what seven, six, seven dollars, depending on where you what store you go to. I think Walmart seven dollars and change, Sam's Club at six dollars and change. That's for a 10 pound bag of pancake mix. That makes a lot of pancakes, and you can buy a huge jug of maple syrup. Yeah, it's not gonna be the greatest thing in the world all the time if that's all you have to eat, but you can even you know, you can even get away with just that. Um, and just have different things to put it with. Like, for example, I got um, some sausage gravy. I bought some sausage gravy, and I bought apple pie filling. Um, I figured that way I could eat it with the pancakes and give it a different flavor. Um, you know, different gravies, things like that. You really had uh, jams, jellies, uh, peanut butter, those things. You can, you don't have to have bread to eat with, you know, those with. You can eat them with pancakes, which are so much easier to make than bread. And it still gives you that, those carbs you need. Um, and it just, you know, helps flavor it up. You get fresh uh, canned fruit, you know, get that, you open that up, you throw it on the pancakes. You can eat, do a lot of different things with pancakes. Um, you know, it's... It, to bring it back around that you guys really should i recommend go out and you know get the food that you can while you can uh because this uh food shortage uh for some it, if it uh really comes to fruition soon it it could mean death for a lot of people unfortunately uh death for a lot of families um and a lot of people who are going out there and only buying a week's worth of food at a time, you know, think about that. A week into an event where there's no f groceries on the shelves for you to buy, those people are going to be desperate after a few days when they're even low on food and know they can't get groceries and they only have two or three days left. Things are going to get scary for people and they're going to do things they wouldn't normally do with rule of law. They're going to go, they're going to steal, they're going to, you know, rob people, they're going to kill people for their things, they're going to, you know, r run into your house and beat up your whole family and take all your food, things like that, and, you know, on the other side of this, um, it's important to be able to defend those things, um, I'll talk more about that in another video, but, um, well, for now, we'll just leave it at that, it's important to be able to defend the things you have, uh, from people who want to take those things, um, but that's just uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, I really implore you to go out there and uh, stock up on some food. Even if you can only do $4 a week, $5 a week. That still gives you four or five cans of beef ravioli or, or chicken noodle soup. Or, you know, uh, I, I'm pretty sure uh, canned fruit is less than a dollar a can, you know. That gets you at least four or five cans a week if you can spend four or five dollars. And that adds up really quick. In a month, you got 20 cans. You know, for one person, that's a lot. Of, if you eat, you know, if you can live off of two cans a day, easy. If you have to, you can. Might not be what you're used to eating, but you can. And that will give you 10 days. If you have 20 cans, that gives you 10 days worth of living if you can eat. Even if you're eating you know, two cans of ravioli a day, it's better than dying. It's better than not having food. And that gives one person 10 days worth of food if you eat two cans of raviolis a day. Um, so, yeah, um, that's all I really want to talk to you guys about today. Um, and I would love to hear what you guys had to say about it. Any uh, questions, um, uh, your opinion on stocking food uh, during a pandemic? Um, so yeah, you guys have a great day. I'm out.